And I'm not sure what the heck it is I do differently. But anyhow, I'll show you what I do and give a brief demonstration with a hull of a German destroyer that I brought along. Anyhow, everybody asks me how I hand paint. So the only thing I can do is show you what I use, what I do. And I'm only going to use one color because to let everything dry here for two hours would drive you people nuts. <laughs> well, we're all patient. We have to do Yes, I know, but... <laughs> Anyhow, I guess I'm ready. Hand painting. A uh, series of brushes that I use. I use specifically acrylics. Uh, Tamiya paint. And I guess I like this because it adheres better for me. It goes on smooth. Other kinds of paint I bought. Uh, model masters and such acrylics. I find that I'll paint on the things and then I try to tape it and he will drop the paint with it and all that sort of stuff. This stuff works. And this is an acrylic? This is an acrylic, yeah. And I, I paint indoors so I don't like the stench of enamels. Do you now, prime it first? Hmm? Do you prime it? Oh, no. Never have. I just, uh, basically I washed this hull in Ajax uh, dish soap and then dried it down. That seems to work. Gets rid of whatever there is to... And instead of priming, usually I just do two coats of the paint. I mean, one color, it's easy enough to do. Problem with to me is sometimes they don't have the colors I like so I have to mix it or things. For example, their hull red is almost like a Venus blood color. It's almost purple. So what I've done is I'll get a jar, a big one, and then so that I always get the same color of paint matching all the time. For example, this is two jars of uh, flat red with one jar of, uh, what is that? It's uh, that uh, Japanese uh, deck color for their oh, linoleum, linoleum, linoleum deck yeah, brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's what this is. And if I always, you know, three jars of it, I'm always going to get the same mix all the time so I can continuously use fresh batches on the same kit. Now, let me just shake this thing up and I will paint around the hull. But first, I always have brushes for different tones. I keep them that way. This is my hull red brush because it always retains that stain, so I don't want to get the gray mixed up with it. And when I have the water, I've got different uh, containers of water. I've got one that I use for the hull red, one for the light grays and whites, and another one for the uh, dark grays and the blue colors. Okay, what kind of brushes? These brushes I got, gosh, in, uh, in an art shop back in Atlanta. They're soft. I don't know what they're made of. Probably sable. Yeah, sable or something like that. And I have yet to have to buy anything here. And this has been about 10 years ago. Wow. But I could probably get these at a place like Michael's or something mm -hmm. like that. And then for the fine detail, I get the, at the hobby shop, you know, the, to me, a little brush. They'll work fine. Little lines. And when I really have to do some touch up, like a little tiny spot somewhere, I sharpen a toothpick. And just like that. And then after I'm all through completely building the model, there's going to be some streaking on this paint just by the nature of hand painting. Uh, I spray some dull coat over it, the tester's dull coat or something like that. Take it outside and I'll do that. And that blends in the brush strokes and everything? Yeah, it does. Because it gives it sort of a pitted appearance. Mm -hmm. You know how you can, when you spray stuff, it just like drops? Mm -hmm. It'll do the same thing. It gets rid of a lot of the streaking. So, you can do what you want, and I'll just sit here and do a little bit of painting here. I'm not going to do the whole thing now, but just to give you an idea. Hey, if you guys want to come up and get closer, sure, go for it. Feel free. And I keep my paint relatively new. As you see, I date the containers. Once they get really old, what they're good for is uh, 
filling in seams and stuff. When you paint it, so ah, uh, when it starts to get thick and out of hand. Okay, not by date. Though. Not by date necessarily, but I date it, so I know which one is my newest one. So basically, I just keep going on an even stroke. About how long would a, a jar of a, a ten, uh, to be an acrylic last? Depends what I'm building. Right now, I'm working on the one two hundredth Missouri. Five, five <laughs> and a quarter. So yeah. You use it up all so I go into a Colfar Hobbies, and one time the guy had said, "You know, you're buying about ten jars of this uh, XF19, like uh, <laughs> Sky Gray." And I said, "Yeah, I know." At a time. He thought I was nuts. A little hard to see in here, but that's okay. I'm just doing. First coat, I go over rapidly. Then later on, I do a second coat. Two coats is enough usually if I've cleaned this thing properly. Victor, do you run into problems where you come back to an area and it, maybe it hasn't dried yet and it messes up the finish? Or? I wait till it dries. Okay. It does dry. So you just kind of go? I'm going around here slowly. So once right. you go over here, you don't go back? I don't go time. back. No. Okay. Not on the first pass, ever. Because if you do that, you'll pull the paint right off. Right. Just you keep asking questions because I'm not. You start with the lighter colors and then proceed to the darker colors. Uh, pretty much always, I was going to say that. Yeah, for example, the next color I would be doing if I was doing this completely here now would be the hull red, and then followed by the black boot stripe. And for the portholes, what I will do is I'll get uh, a 7B artist pencil sharpen it real well and just sort of spin it around inside each one of those little portholes there and that it gives you a glass like effect i used to drill it out but i find this is better because it reflects in the light and it looks actually like glass now what do you do that with i heard you with a 7b artist pencil okay very soft and is that is that a brush or is that a real pencil it's a real just a standard drawing pencil graphite oh okay oh yeah. i see mm -hmm. all right so you're getting the reflection of the graphite. Yeah, exactly, and it gives a glass impression. And then we go around here, and then on the other side, hopefully I won't touch it. I got something. This requires a lot of patience when you're doing a 1-200 scale battleship. And a lot of paint. Yeah. <laughs> Victor, after you've uh, painted it, do you ever go back and rub it down or sand it? Or? I haven't had to sand anything much. Uh, occasionally, if I've got a seam in there or something like that, I might have to, where there's a bump that shows up, especially after painting, I'll go back and do that. And that's okay. another reason why, I, as I mentioned, I spray this thing with the uh, dull coat at the end of building. If you do it before you're finished and you have to go over something, the dull coat seems to give it a more of a, it darkens it a little bit. So you put a patch of paint on there and it's obvious yeah. afterwards. Okay. Does um, dry mount conditions like heat and humidity affect the paint? Uh, it does not. What does affect it is the, uh, uh, go out and dull coat something on a cold day, you have to watch out because, or a damp day, you can frost it because that happened to me once. Because you're doing that outside? Yeah. Go outside of the dog coat unless you want to remember your 60 days. Really? <laughs> yeah. Get you high. <laughs> I know, that's another reason, too. That stuff has a smell and it leaves me with a headache. So, just let this dry. I'm not going to put a second coat or anything on it, but you get the general gist. It's pretty smooth, this kind of paint. So, what is amazing how you use your left hand? For me, no, your right hand holding the oh, yeah, all, 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 all your fingers uh, uh, gliding around the hole from inside to be stable. That you, uh -huh. you never use any support, no. Uh, well, on the one 200, yeah, I gotta put them oh. down, but this is a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> you can't hold the Missouri up, you're gonna be like this. That'd be a good workout. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, okay, you I mean... A, a pass is like a pianist, you know? <laughs> <laughs> your like your brother. Your 200 tall, what is it, about 3 feet? Uh, the Missouri is 4 and something plus. Wow. <laughs> it's, and my room is tiny. 
and I've got this, I've got a table that I can slide around the room, plus I've got it on the Lazy Susan. But the problem is I had to be real careful when I turn that thing around because it can bash the shelves and everything yeah. else in yeah. there. Yeah. You need smaller boats or a bigger room? I know, I know, I know. I see your room. Bigger room. Like on your Missouri, when you start a side, you like to finish that side. Yes. Yes. Yeah, not stop. And I do not stop. Big, Nothing interferes with it. Right. Because I want to keep that flow going. Flow going. Before I finish mm -hmm. one entire coat. Right. Now, when you're painting, like what you just did, gray on gray yes. plastic, do you um, find yourself having problems with holidays? Uh, I'm painted so Boy. Boy, where, where you miss a spot. Oh, that's yeah. That happens. That happens. That happens. But that's the thing. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> no, what I do in that case, you know, because I always go over, I do one coat completely around. And then I come around again, so I don't worry too much about that until I'm working on my second coat. Then I go a lot slower. Okay. Yeah. And how, and many, how long will you let it dry? <sighs> Something like this. An hour. An hour at the most is fine. Uh, when I'm doing a 1-200 scale, however, I went through this damn thing so rapidly, there's still a lot of wet spots on it, I have home. Under 1-200s, I can keep going around and around, but this, I would have to wait an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how many still total coats do you put on? Uh, usually no more than two. Okay. It depends on the color. Uh, when I did my Missouri, I did the gray, and then there is, of course, it's in that, uh, what is it, MS-22? Mm -hmm. There's that blue. Right. And then I... Since the black fit exactly the width of a piece of masking tape and scale, it was uh -huh. just like this. Right. What I did was I did the black next with a stripe around the blue on top, and I just lowered the black down lower than the red would have been. And then I put this tape right directly around the black and then went underneath there and did the red. But I had to do three coats of red because the black always showed through. But I thought that would be easier than trying to tape and tape and tape. And tape. Which, uh, which flavor of masking tape do you prefer most? Uh, the Tamiya is what I've always been using. Yeah. Yeah. This works just fine. And occasionally, of course, I'll get a little tiny bit of bleed through it. Again, I got that little toothpick there. I can tap the spots that are done badly. And then when I get to weathering it a little bit, I just put a little bit of rust colored pastel on it. So I can mask that. So that's about it. If you want to look at this after it's dry, you'll see that it's a little bit rough. But then after you put a second coat on it, and then after you're finished with the kit, if you're patient enough to not mind seeing all those rough spots on there, you put that dull coat on it, it looks almost like it was airbrushed. Well, do you have, do you have any issues with um, uh, when you put on your second coat, you, you have any issues with the paint thickness that's actually visible. Uh, in other words, you get a zone where it's, it's too thick uh, so that you can actually see that there's a, a, a lump. Oh, occasionally, if it gets, yeah, then you can just lightly, smoothly sand it down or something like that and make sure you brush the dust off of it and then you can go over it. Because sometimes I'll have problems with seams that I don't see before I paint. So I'll have to go back and sand it lightly and then fill it in with a bit of putty. And then what I do in that case, if the strip is narrow enough, I'll put some tape on either side of the paint so I don't rub off the paint where it's good. And then once I've done the sanding, I'll take that tape off, clean the thing up, and then paint over that spot again. Okay, maybe I didn't hear because of the noise. Yeah. From, why did you do hand, um, yeah, I was kind of straight on the noise. Uh, hand brushing over spray. Now, I have a USS Wasp, uh, an LH yeah. and, and right. 1350, which is over three feet long in the hull. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I was thinking about do I spray paint or what? Why do you use the brush instead? Well, if airbrushing, I am a in mechanical incompetent. I cannot clean those damn things. The last time I used an airbrush, the top popped off and I painted the ceiling of the garage black. Are <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to use those little airbrushes? <laughs> well, no, they're supposed to be little airbrushes. I don't know what. And then I can never mix the paint right, and then I have to do it outdoors and all that sort of stuff. Sweat like a pig in Atlanta. Like the white paint and stuff? The 
Wagner story yeah. again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were the coal parts out of Home Depot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I'm looking at one two hundred Missouri. It's kind of big. So, but but anyway, yeah. no, but I just don't that. like mechanical devices. Yeah. I don't even own a power lawnmower. You don't use a small brush. Definitely. No, I've got various sizes. Okay, I used a fairly small one on this one because the hull is right. small, and what it does. It slows me down so that I can paint properly. On yeah. the bigger ones, this is going to probably drive you nuts, but this is about what I use. This is what I used on my Missouri. Wow. Oh, man. So you've never experimented <laughs> at all with a miniature roller? <laughs> like you, like the little ones at Home Depot, you mean? Two hundred scale ship of, of something like a miniature roller. Right? Like, again, or a bigger brush, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's it. I, I, I guess I'm patient. Jerry, I want that. I want to sell that wash back to you. <laughs> I've got one. <laughs> Don't need to. No, I, I bought one on Jerry. Well, back. Okay. So, Victor, I'm just saying, yeah. I, I have a question. So, this is more of a strategy. So, you you paint you paint first the whole. And then you assemble, uh, assemble the part and paint them, and then you glue to the. Oh, hole okay. Well, it varies. I mean, normally, if I were building this right now, I'm going to put this back in the box. I would have attached the rudder and the propeller shafts, and I would have painted the red with those on there. And it varies. It depends. If I can see where I'm not going to have different colors of paint mixing into each other, I can build subcomponents first, and then paint the subcomponents after I've built them. So you do the hull before you do the deck? I just, it's, yeah. yeah okay. And sometimes I will attach the deck to it. If I'm putting on one of those wooden decks, I will attach the, hull, uh, the deck to this before I paint, because that way I can get the paint over the edges here. And so what about the, the, the photo edge? You, you paint it? That's, oh yeah, I should have mentioned that too. I can paint that directly sometimes, but some photo etch I've gotten, it's so smooth that uh, what I do is I'll get a uh, can of dull coat and spray the photo etch before I put paint on it. It gives it a little bit of tooth so it holds the paint together. You can also dip it in so vinegar. Yeah. So what's, what's that? Uh, what, what do you start? Of uh, the uh, Tester's dull coat? I thought I brought some. Maybe I don't have it. I hear it. I hear the rattle can. Somewhere in here it went. I hear it. I hear it. It's in there. Uh-huh. Yeah, this. You can get this at Cold Wars. Is there a separate dull coat for acrylic versus enamels? No, I just uh, that's I think that's an amble if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah it just so long as the paint's dry, you're good. No, the only trouble I had with the doing the spraying outside is if it's a cold or a damp day, you'll probably get some whitening of it. But then I saw that it was a kit my son built. We got some of the gloss coat, sprayed it with the gloss coat, that got rid of it, and then the dull coat it did again. Oh, uh, do, do you, uh, oh, yeah. do you have to use a, uh, a fix it in before you start weathering, or do you, do you uh, put the dull coat on? Oh, uh, no, actually, I put the dull coat on first because I use pastels, and uh, as a result, you get some more too, so you can get that stuff on better. And then I'll just pass the dull coat over it again to hold in the pastel weathering. If, if, if you, uh, Thank you inadvertently get a fingerprint in there, um, how do you handle that? Just paint over the fingerprint. You don't sand first or anything? I mean, if I catch it in time, yeah, otherwise I'd have to sand a little bit. I try to avoid that if you notice the way Rodrigo was watching me handling the thing. Yeah, I couldn't handle something <laughs> like that. That's, that's a lot of it does. That's good tape. Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone ever used frog tape? I do. I use it out at the museum uh -huh. on stuff I use an airbrush because it has that frog tape has some it's green it's expensive has some kind of a a powder barrier to it so when you put it down it instantly dries whatever you spray or paint on it and it gives just razor sharp lines and it's a low tack tape so you can pull it off and it's fairly 
um, fairly flexible. If I get it down to about three eighths of an inch, I can do like a two or three inch radius on something. And it seems to work very, very well. Is that the brand where there's like a green and a yellow? Frog. It has a big, it has a, it's got a frog on it. It has a tree, <laughs> a tree frog. It has a tree frog on it. And you get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it actually comes in a pl sealed plastic container, a reusable, like Tupperware. And they tell you to put it back in there between uses. Yeah. They have, I'm pretty sure it's the same one. There's a, a lower tack. It's kind of yellow. Mm -hmm. Looks oh, more okay. Like, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. That's and, uh, I read a lot of guys tried using it, uh, but a lot of them didn't like it because it didn't stay where they put it. Eventually, it would like curl back. It wouldn't oh, tack. Right I haven't back. had this come off at all. Because yeah. this stuff I can leave on for a long time, let something yeah. dry, and then I can paint the next color down. It yep. stays together. Yeah. The, the regular frog paper yeah. never had reuse. Okay. But I've, I've left it on anywhere from a few minutes to a few days. Right. And, and that powder or whatever it is that's in it, that's supposed to be. Uh, activated by moisture. Yeah, it's a coagulant. That's what it is. I mean, to use the, that kind of term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The minute moisture touches it, it turns to whatever it's going to do. It locks the paint. Ah, right there. Yeah. And that's the reason that you don't get any paint seepage underneath. Yeah. They use it for painting graphics on ceilings and walls and things. Because right. you can do very complex stuff and no bleed through. Got it. Yeah. The thing is, I got to take my time pressing that thing into the side of the hole oh, yeah. too. Otherwise, yeah. it can dribble in. 3M offers a version of that tape too in their blue painter's tape called Edge Lock or something. Uh -huh. and, uh, it, but it's not as good as the frog. It's, I, I, I bought a roll by mistake working around the house. I was mad I had to spend nine bucks for a roll by masking yeah. tape, you know, Home Depot. And I got home and I was painting a wall and my wife was reading something and she was like, what's this printing on? It's got writing on the tape. I was like, reading it's like Edge Lock technology. And I'm like, oh, no wonder. So I'm like, don't use that. I want to use that in the, in the hobby room. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't care if the wall is on the wall. I tried using it on models. It's okay, but it's the frog tape's better. Right. Yeah. So, so you I'm, mentioned that the, uh, yeah. the um, dog coat is no good to spray outside in cold. Um, about what outside temperature do you think is, is safe? I've been okay with 50 plus. 50 mm -hmm. plus? Yeah. And let it dry outside too. Because that's oh, that's not. Yeah, I just leave it out <laughs> yeah. there in the front yard for a while because oh boy, collect dust and crap. Huh? You don't get no dust and crap in it. That's what we're mean. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, that hasn't happened yet. That's a thought though. I just never thought. <laughs> well, I, I left one out by mistake all day when I came home from work. Oh my God! I went running out there, collecting uh -huh. my grandson's and get a hold of it. Yeah. And it was it was fine. There was no dust or anything on it. Okay. So I, li I live next to a, a bus stop, and then buses come in there like 747s, and it's oh. just a cloud of dust. Oh, I've got a stone wall around where I have my hobby. Room. You build a stone wall around your place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps a lot. Keeps the dogs and other things out, too. <laughs> yeah, I keep you out of trouble. Yeah, what you can get is a cardboard box or something put over it if you're concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But in all honesty, you have to be careful because cardboard sheds are a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah use those know. plastic storage containers. Yeah. 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 yeah, if there you, you spray go. inside a cardboard box. Well, don't spray inside. No, but, but, yeah. but I'm saying you'll see how much yeah. stuff releases, oh, yeah. and it'll do that just sitting yeah. outside, too. Yeah. Yeah, I've ruined a bunch so, of yeah. things that way. Mark, you want to go into those plastic big tupperware. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what the downfall of hand painting is. If you're wanting to do something like the Iowa and its early camouflage pattern, or the Richelieu, which was, uh, they did a lot of work on it in the United <coughs> States, they had that feathered camouflage pattern. Oh, yeah. I can't do that with this. It's got to be airbrushed. It's got to be airbrushed. Yeah. Or spray painted. Uh, I've used airbrush and spray painting. The only spray painting do if I've got these uh, gold anchor chains, I'll get a piece of fishing line, tie it to a tree, and spray can it black. That's about it. And then, of course, the links of the chain are all down this way, so. As soon as you turn it around, you see all the gold on the other yeah. side, so you have to stretch it out and do the other side. Yeah. 
there's a product called Blackamid that you can use and just dip it and leave it in the, yeah, the leave the brass in it for a period of time and when you bring it out uh, you wash it off and it looks like iron. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Where'd, you, oh, okay. where'd you get that? Uh, any of the hobby shops, yeah, certainly, cold, uh, certainly Caboose Hobbies carries it. Mm -hmm. It's copper sulfate, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's yeah, you have to sulfate. wash it off because it's a corrosive. Yeah, and then that blends with the right. copper color. Well, you have so to wash it off because it's a corrosive. Yes, it's yeah. corrosive. Yeah. Some of those barrels that we got from Master, yeah. I had blackened a couple of them and laid them on a paper towel dry overnight, mm -hmm. and they were almost rusty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to wash it. Mm -hmm. And they're ruined, I mean, they're totally. Yeah. Eat them alive, huh? Yeah. So that's about it. I mean, if you want to take a this thing that's practically dry now, you can see it's a little rough. It's only a first coat, but with another coat, and then you put the dull coat on it, you get a pretty smooth finish. So will the second coat actually smooth it out? It'll smooth out. You notice there's some spots that I haven't gotten covered. Uh-huh. That's one thing. And it'll smooth it out. I'm sorry, holidays? Because you're probably going over, you're painting in different, uh, the strokes are different, so you're covering mm -hmm. up the parts that you did. Right, right. Or missed already, and plus sure. it'll smooth out some of it. Sure. Yeah, you know.